first day of the month of November. Yes. So if you are here today, there must be a plan for your life. Yes. I'm trying to tell you that COVID came My with God. a plan. Come on now. COVID came with an agenda. Yes. With the hundreds of thousands of people who oh died already. God. So if you can make it to the month of Lord. November and you're still breathing and you're still walking around and you still have something going for you, it must be that there's a plan over your life. It must be there's a reason why you're still around. It must be that God and his sovereignty, he has a reason why he still has you here. People have died. People are gone already. People are in the casket already. There are people who are sick foot under already. If you are here today, if you have the breath of God today, it must be that there's a plan for your life. There must be a plan for your life. Listen to this. I was reading on social media today and they were saying that, someone said, that COVID-19 by this point, it's no, it's no longer 19. At this point, it seems like this thing has been so it's, it's been around for so long this thing it seems like it's 21 now it's no longer 19 it's like it's 21 but I have some news for COVID I know someone who's been around longer than you I know someone who's been around longer than you they call him the ancient of ages they call him the one who was who is and who is to come I have some news for every pandemic I have some news for every sickness I know a rocker. I know the everlasting rocker. Yes. His name is Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. And it's on this rock Hallelujah. that I stand today. It's on this rock that we stand today. The everlasting rock. The rock of ages. Ooh. On Christ the Son. The rock I stand yes. all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Lord, this morning we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your word that gives life. This few minutes that we will spend in your presence. We ask, Lord, that you would take full control. That everything that we would do, Lord, would be done under the surrender of your Holy Spirit. It would be done under the submission, the total submission of your spirit. We thank you, Lord, for the hearts who will be blessed. We thank you, Lord, for the people who will find the word today. Yes, that only you can give. So, Lord, I take myself out of the spotlight so you can come in and you can shine. We worship you tonight and we honor your holy name. In Jesus Christ's name. And the church said. Amen. And the church said. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on and clap for the Lord this morning. Thank you, worship team. Hallelujah. You may be seated wherever you are. Hallelujah. This morning. I am so happy and excited. I don't know why. But this morning, I woke up with a song in my heart. And the Lord has been um, just giving me, um, he has given me, he has prepared me for what he's doing in this season. So I greet the people of God. And I thank the Holy Spirit for the opportunity to be here with you, with you all. <clears throat> I also want to take this time to thank and to greet my spiritual covering, our spiritual parents, Mommy, Mommy Patricia Toussaint and Daddy G. Come on, church. Let's. Let's apply the law of honor. You see, we're no longer in November, so Pastor Appreciation Month is finished. But what we do is more than just a month. It's, just, it's more than just a week of appreciation. It's more than just a day. Honor is a lifestyle. So no matter the month you're in, no matter the week you're in, no matter the day, it's just a lifestyle. It's just what you do. So Mommy, uh, Mommy Pat and... Daddy G, we honor you. We thank you for the opportunity. We greet you this morning. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, and thank you for what you're doing for the kingdom of God. Um, it, it does not go unnoticed, so thank you for that. Let's give it again, uh, church. 
for our spiritual parents. Wherever you are in New York and Boston and Orlando, you can do it, yeah? You can apply the law of honor to our spiritual parents. We thank the Lord for that. And I take this time also to greet all of our viewers online, those on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram. Uh, come on, let's give it up, everyone. Oh, I feel, I, I, feel, I feel you guys are a little cold, but it's okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it by myself. I want to take this time also to greet all of our campuses, those who are in, in uh, Orlando, those who are in, uh, well, Miami, uh, New York, Boston. Um, we greet you this morning uh, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And also, if you're a first-time visitor, we greet you also. We say welcome to Tabernacle of Glory. And we are excited for the word this morning, and we pray that the Lord will speak to you through his word um, this morning. So, Lord, once again, we commit this time to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you because you will allow your people to focus, Lord. You will give us spiritual Adderall so we can focus on your word. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. So how many people remember when they were in high school or maybe in college and then the teacher would walk in and then the teacher would say, pop quiz. The teacher will give you a quiz and then, you know, I mean, for me, for myself, Whenever that happened, I knew I was going to fail because I, I never really studied like that. And so, well, guess what? This morning, you have a pop quiz. Yes, you have a pop quiz. If you're online, if you're on YouTube, get yourself ready because this morning you have a pop quiz. But don't worry. Don't, don't be fearful. We're going to go through it together. So, the first question of our pop quiz is true or false? True or false? The theme of this year, this whole year, we're talking about Growing in the love of Christ. True or false? Oh, some people are saying false. All right. So what are, what are the YouTube people saying? If you're on YouTube, you can, you can also um, respond true or false, whether or not you think we are talking about this year about growing in the love of Christ. Well, the answer to that question is false. This whole year, we've been talking about the fruit of the Spirit. So since January, with the guidance of our spiritual father, we have been talking about the fruits of the Spirit. So we spent all of the months of 2020 talking about joy, talking about patience, talking about love, talking about um, goodness, kindness, self-control. And so the second question of the, of the, of the uh, pop quiz is, the theme verse for this year is found in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. True or false? The theme verse for this year is found in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. True or false? All right. What about the people on YouTube? What do you guys think? You can put your answers on the chat. What do you guys think? Do you think it's true? Oh, man, there are some people. Someone answered B. This is not a multiple choice. Uh, anyways, but the answer to this question is true. Um, go ahead and put, uh, let's read uh, together Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, against which there is no law. So if you answered true, then you got that question right. The third one, true or false? We need to pray for self-control every day, especially if we don't feel like we have self-control. True or false? Oh, <laughs> All right, all right. So remember, how many people remember last week's teaching? Our spiritual father, Pastor Greg, told us that the fruit of the Spirit, especially self-control, is not something that you pray for. Why? Because it's already in you. So I see y'all. Y'all changing your answers now, but a lot of you guys said true. The answer to that question is false. You don't have to pray for it every day because it's something that you already have. You see, when you pray for self-control, it's like, just like the example that Pastor Greg gave, it's like someone who needs $2,000 for their rent, and then you deposit it in their account. And then five hours later, they come back to you and they say, well, I need the money for the rent. What would you say to, to that person? You're going to tell them, hey, you don't need to ask me. Just go to your account because the money is already there. It's the same principle with, uh, with the fruit of the Spirit, especially self-control. You don't need to ask God for it anymore because it is something that the Lord has already deposited in you once you received Christ. You see, when you received Christ, he made a deposit 
of the fruit of the Spirit called love. And then it manifests in different ways, like joy, like peace, like goodness, like faithfulness, like self-control. So uh, also dad last week said that one of the reasons why we don't manifest self-control is because we're not properly informed about it, right? So if I tell someone that I gave him $2,000, but if I don't tell them the information where they can make the withdrawal from, then they're never going to withdraw the money. And so it's the same thing. When God has deposited something in you, there has to be a withdrawal that is done in order for it to manifest. And so that's the reason why God has given us spiritual leadership. That's the role of our spiritual father. He's there to train us. How many people remember that from last week? He is there to train us. Just like an athlete needs a trainer, he is there to train us and give us the right information that whatever is inside of us, we can make the withdrawal and experience what is already inside of us. So the fourth question, this is a bonus question. True or false? Yielding to God's spirit is a key aspect of manifesting self-control. True or false? Yielding to God's spirit is a key aspect to manifesting self-control. How many people say true? How many people say false? Well, you want to know the answer? Then listen to today's message. You'll find the answer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, this morning, beloved, we want to talk about three principles that will help you manifest self-control. This morning, I want to talk about three principles that's going to help you manifest what we call self-control. The first one is called avoid temptation. Somebody say avoid temptation. Somebody say avoid temptation. Wherever you are in New York, in Boston, wherever you are, wherever you are on YouTube, go ahead and type it. But if you are here in front of me, say avoid temptation. Yes. So maybe someone can say, Brother Melky, I thought I'm supposed to be strong and face temptation head on and look at it and cast it out and, and you know, be strong and be heroic and, and look the devil in the eye and just, and just cast out temptation. Or someone else can say, well, wouldn't I be considered a coward if I were to run from temptation, if I were to avoid temptation? The answer to that question is no, you're not going to be considered a, it's not called cowardice, it's not called being a coward, it's called wisdom. You see, the Bible never teaches us to stay and fight against temptation. Here's what the Bible tells us when it comes to temptation. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 22. It says, flee also youthful lust." But pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord with a pure heart. The first part of the verse, it doesn't say to run to temptation. It says to flee useful lust. It means to run away from. It means to look at and flee from. Let me show you another verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 18. Paul is also talking to the Corinthians. He tells them, flee sexual immorality. It doesn't say to fight it. It doesn't say to try to be strong against it. It doesn't say to try to be the hero. It doesn't say to try to save the day and face it head on. It says when it comes to these temptations, you don't stay, you flee the scene. This is the only place where it's okay to flee the scene. This is the only place where it's okay for you to leave the scene because it gets, before it gets worse. A great example of this is found in Genesis chapter 39. There's a guy uh, called Joseph. Joseph is sold to a group of slave masters. And he is in this house of this man called Potiphar. And then he's kind of like his personal assistant. And then, you know, he's kind of helping around, him around with the task of the, you know, the day-to-day -day task. But the only problem is Potiphar had a wife. And I don't know, for, the, for a lack of a better term, this woman was a little bit loose. She was, 
She was a little bit loose. She was the type of woman, if it had two legs and if it was breathing, she wanted to lay with it. Look at what the Bible says in Genesis chapter 39, verse 11 and 12. It says, but it happened about this time when Joseph to the, to, went into the house to do his work. And none of the men of the house was inside. So here is Joseph and this woman, uh, Potiphar's wife. Here's what the Bible says. She, talking about Potiphar's wife, she caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. But look at what Joseph did. But he left his garment in her hand. And what does the word, what does the next word said? And he, he fled and he ran outside. This is a little bit humorous to me because I can only imagine Joseph and then the woman puts his hand on him about to, I don't know, rape this guy. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, I'm not even going to talk to you. I'm not even going to cast you out. I'm not even going to say, away from me, Jezebel. I'm not going to say, away from me, Satan. Joseph said, peace, I'm out of here. You see, when it comes to certain temptations, don't put yourself in a fight that God never gave you to fight in the first place. God is not telling you to fight against it. God is not telling you to stand against it. God is telling you to flee from it, to run away from it. Is that all right, church? Do you understand what I'm saying? And so the first principle that can help you to have self-control, number one, you have to avoid temptation. Don't try to play hero. Don't try to be all strong. Because at the end of the day, we have this pride where we're going to think that we can handle it. And next thing we know, you fail the test. And you fail into the temptation. So number one, avoid temptation. We're going to go quick. Number two, be accountable. Someone say be accountable. Be accountable. What is biblical accountability? Listen to this. Being accountable means having a trusted, mature brother and sister, brother or sister in the faith that you share your struggles with. It's having a brother and sister in the faith that's more mature than you, that is wiser than you, that you trust, that you can share your personal struggles with. Beloved, I cannot overemphasize, I cannot overemphasize the importance of this principle. Look at the, what the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter, chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. I think this verse really brings out what biblical accountability really is. It says, how, it, let's read together. It says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Next verse. For if they fall... One will lift up his companion. But look at what it says. It says, woe to him who is alone when he falls. For he has no one to help put him up. Biblical accountability is having a trusted brother or sister that, that is more mature than you. That's there to keep you accountable when you run away from the image of Christ or when you practice things that are not pleasing to God, the goal of this person is to keep you accountable and to keep you straight when you tend to stray off of the road. Sometimes it's okay for you to go into someone, to a brother and sister and say, bro, man, you know what? I need you to help me with this area because I feel like I'm losing control in this. I need you to help me in this area because I feel like if I keep it a secret, it's going to eat me up and I'm not going to be able to, to, to produce the will of God. Can I share something with you? Let me share something with you. And the devil hates what I'm about to tell you. The devil loves secrecy. The devil loves darkness. Anything that you practice in secrecy, everything that you practice in the dark, the devil loves it. And the Bible, when, it, when the Bible, do you know how the Bible calls the kingdom of Satan? It calls it the kingdom of darkness. Which means Satan operates in darkness. He loves when you have little dirty secret things that you hold on to. 
He loves when you have things that are so shameful that you can't share with anybody. Because if, if he can have you keep it inside of you, he's always going to have control over that thing because he dwells in darkness. Does that make sense? He dwells in darkness. He loves darkness. He loves secrecy. As long as he can get you to be by yourself, he loves it when you're by yourself. He loves it when you're hiding things inside and you never reveal it to anyone. You never have anyone that you're accountable for. He loves that and he thrives off of that. But here's what happens. Are you guys ready? You ready for this? So here's what happened. The day that you introduce accountability into your life, listen good, listen to this. The day that you introduce accountability into your life and you find a trusted brother or sister that's mature in the faith, the day that you have accountability, whatever was in darkness transitions now, now becomes part of light. And if it's in the light, God has room to access it and break the yoke. You see, the Bible says in John chapter 8 verse 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not be in darkness, but he will receive the light of life. So the minute that you take this dark thing, this secret thing, and then you tell someone that you trust. You let God lead you to someone and you tell them. And then you say, bro, you know this thing, I, I, I feel like I'm losing control. Sis, I mean, I've been struggling with this. I've been struggling with my finances. I've been struggling with my school. Every time I register for a class, I, I, I register for it, but something happens. I'm always delayed. I've been struggling every time I try to study. Every time I try to study and then it's late at night and then I'm in front of the television screen, I'm in front of the computer, I find myself on these websites that are not pleasing to God. And then that person provides a level of accountability. And then periodically they check up on you. Hey bro, I know you've been struggling with this. How is this going? Hey sis, I know you've been struggling in this area. I'm praying for you. I'm rooting for you. Oh, you, you fell? Come on, get back up. You fell again? Come on, get back up. I'm praying for you. Stay away from those drinks. Stay away from these people. Stay away from those friends. Stay away from those websites. It transitions from darkness. Now it's in the light. And it's, when it's in the light, then deliverance can happen. God has control over it now. Because now it's exposed to the light. So my question for a young man today, my question for a young woman, who are you accountable to? Who's your spiritual accountability? I know it's a tough question to ask, but in my spiritual life, it, it has made a world of a difference. Who are you accountable to? Or in other words, what is, let me pull it like this. Who is the iron that's sharpening your iron? Who is the iron that's sharpening your iron. You see, when you add accountability to your life, everything that was in the dark now transitions to light. And when it's in the light, God has the power to deliver it. God has the power to, his, to put his grace on it. God has the power to break the chain. But it needs to be exposed. And you need to expose it through accountability. Does that make sense, church? Does that make sense, church? So, so far we said the, the first thing that you can do in order to have self-control, the first principle is to avoid temptation. Number two, we said to be accountable. Number three, yield to the Holy Spirit. Someone say it. Say yield to the Holy Spirit. Wherever you are in Boston, wherever you are in New York, wherever, wherever you're in Orlando or on YouTube or on Facebook, say it with me. Say, yield to the Holy Spirit. Say, yield to the Holy Spirit. Now, for those of you who drive, you know exactly what we mean by yield. When you come before a, a sign, whatever sign that it is, it says yield. Now, when you come to a yield sign, do you just go? No. The yield sign is 
the sign's way of telling you, be careful because there's traffic up ahead. And if you decide to ignore the yield sign, then there's a chance that you may lose your life and get into a car accident. And so when you see a yield sign, you defer to it. You submit to it. You surrender to the sign. You give into the sign. You concede to it because you know if you just go mindlessly, you're going to hit something and you can potentially lose your life. And so the same principle applies to yielding to the Holy Spirit. You see, when you, heal, when you yield to the Holy Spirit, you submit to the Spirit of God. You surrender to the Spirit of God. You, you concede to, you defer to the Spirit of God. The, let, listen to this. The fruit of the Spirit. Listen to this carefully. The fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit only works when you yield to the Spirit. I know it sounds basic. I know it sounds very simple, but try to understand this. The fruit of the Spirit can only manifest when you yield to the Spirit. The fruit of the Holy Spirit can only manifest when you yield to the Spirit. Maybe the first, maybe the best example of yielding to the Holy Spirit that I could find in the Bible was found in Matthew chapter 26. The Bible says that when Jesus was about to accomplish maybe the greatest mission on earth, the greatest mission on earth, he was in a garden called the Garden of Gethsemane. And prophetically, he saw what was going to happen. He saw the crown of thorns that was going to be put on his head. He saw the nails that he was going to be, um, that were going to pierce through his hands. He saw the things that were going to happen to him. And when he saw the suffering, when he saw what was going to happen to him, when he saw the agony, the Bible says that he spoke to the Father. He said, Father, if it's possible that this cup may be taken away from me. In other words, you were saying, Lord, is there another way for me to do this? Is there another way for me to accomplish this mission? Is there a plan B? Is there a plan C? Is there another option that I can use to accomplish the same mission? Because it's going to be hard for me. And then the Bible says, nevertheless, not my will be done, but your will be done. You see, the minute where he said, not my will, but your will, what he effectively did, he yielded to the Holy Spirit of God. He yielded to God's Spirit. And so, in other words, every time there's something that comes before you, and then your will wants to do it, your flesh wants to do it, you want to go in to do it, and then you say, God, not my will, but your will be done. Effectively, what, are you, what you're doing, you're yielding to the Spirit of God. And so, yielding to the Spirit is a level of surrender where you say, I was going to go there, but I'm not going there anymore. I was going to do this, but I'm hearing God's Spirit tells me to do something else. So, Lord, not my will be done in this situation. Not what my flesh wants to do. Not what, not what I'm thinking of doing, but let your will be done. When you do that, congratulations. You've just yielded to the Spirit of God for that situation. Does that make sense, church? And so the best way that I can illustrate this, let me show you how, to, how I would like to illustrate this so you can understand how someone can yield to the Holy Spirit. Can I have my volunteers, please? I surrender all to you everything all right guys so here i have some balloons so the funny thing about this is this morning i stole my daughter's balloon so even i need self-control because this morning i took the girl's balloons and now she's probably watching me and when i get home i got some explaining to do but we'll, we'll worry about that later so we have a few balloons here and these balloons really represent your trials the temptations that life can often bring us they represent for some people maybe it's um you know when you when you're in front of the computer you just can't control yourself they represent for some of us it's 
when you go shopping, you just can't control yourself. The lady said, amen. They represent when you're in front of that bottle, when you're in front of that wine bottle, you can never just take one sip. It always has to be the whole bottle. They represent the trials and temptations that often will come in our way. So I've laid them out here, and here we kind of have like an obstacle course that represents the, the trials, the temptations, our moments of weaknesses. And, and so I have, I have here my volunteer. Let's give it up for my volunteer this morning. You can come this way. You can walk. Keep walking. So what she's going to attempt to do, she's going to attempt to navigate through this obstacle course without stepping on the temptations, without stepping on the balloons, because they represent, they represent our pitfalls. They represent the temptations. They represent the things that God does not want us to do. And so she's going to try to make it from this side to the other side without stepping on these. By the way, Sister Manu, these balloons have water, so if you step on it, you're going you're gonna to dirty dad's pulpit. So no pressure, all right? No pressure. All right, so can you hear me? All right, she can hear me. I need you to, I need you to take one step forward. I need you to take another step forward. I need you to take another step forward. Perfect. I need you to take one step to the left. I need you to take another step to the left. Okay, perfect. Take another step to the left. Okay, take a tiny step again to the left. Perfect. Okay, now take one step forward. Take another step forward. Take a big step forward. Take a big step forward. Uh-huh. Take another big step forward. Okay. Now take one step to the right. Take another step to the right. Take another step to the right. Take another step to the right. Now move forward. Another step forward. All right, let's have a little bit of fun. Take one step to the right again. Take another step to the right. Okay, now stop. Take a tiny step backwards. Take a little tiny step again backwards. <laughs> you better move. Take a little tiny step backwards. Perfect. Take one step to the right. Take a tiny step backwards. Take a tiny step backwards. Take another step to the right. Take another step to the right. Move forward. Take another step forward. Take another step forward. Take another step forward. Congratulations. You can take your mat. You can take your... You have just yielded to my voice. Thank you, Sister Manu. So what she did, you can leave them. You can leave them. What she was effectively able to do, even though she did not see the obstacles, but because she heard a voice, and because she yielded to the voice, she was able to maneuver her way. She was able to maneuver her way to the obstacles without stepping on the obstacles, but only because she was able to yield to the voice that she was listening to. Come on, y'all. I'm trying to preach this thing. I'm trying to preach. Would you help me preach this thing? If you're in New York, help me preach. If you're in Boston, help me preach. If you're in Miami, help me preach. I have some good news for you. When you encounter the trials and the tribulations of life, 
All you have to do uh, is to yield to that voice. Uh, you may not be able to see the temptation. You may not be able to see the drugs. Uh, you may not be able to see uh, the snares of the enemy. Uh, but all you have to do, uh, if only you're able to listen uh, and yield uh, to the voice that is calling you. Hallelujah. Listen to this. Life is an obstacle course. And then in life, you will find temptations. But as long as you're able to move through, and God will tell you, go to the right, my son. When you go to the right, you may find another obstacle. He say, no, no, no. Take a few steps backwards. And then he say, no, move to the left. And then you move to the left. And he said, go to the right. And then you move to the right. And then you finagle your way. And then you go through until you get to the other side. I'm here to tell somebody, you tried everything. You tried preaching. You tried fasting. You tried praying. You tried everything. But maybe the only thing that you need now, maybe you just need to yield to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Oh, he says, it's not by power. It's not by might. You can't do it by power. You can't do it by might. You can't break the chain by might. But by my spirit. By my spirit. By my spirit, says the Lord. By my spirit. When you yield to the spirit of God. When you yield to the voice of God. You go through the temptations. You go to the problems. And then you go around them. Sometimes you don't walk around them. Sometimes you have to dance around them. Sometimes you have to praise around them. Sometimes you have to worship around them. Sometimes you have to think your way out of them. But when you yield to the Spirit of God. Oh God. Oh God. I surrender all to you. Everything I leave to you. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. I surrender all.
my assignment today was to bring you to the point of surrender. You see, when you yield, you surrender. There's two, let me say this, there's two things that's competing for your attention. Every believer, you have two things competing for attention. You have the spirit on one end and you have the flesh on the other end. The spirit always wants to pray. The flesh never wants to pray. Man, we ain't praying today. I'm tired of praying. The spirit wants to fast. The flesh never wants to fast. Man, I want them chicken wings. The spirit wants to be truthful. The flesh never wants to be truthful. The spirit wants to do the right thing. The flesh never wants to do it. So it's a tug of war. It's a tug of war. Now listen to this. I'll finish with this. Listen to this. I told you there's two things competing for you, the flesh and the spirit. Yes. What you yield to will determine the fruit you produce. My God. Yes, Lord. Oh, I don't know if you caught that. Yes. If you yield to the spirit, Hallelujah. you will produce the fruits My of God. the spirit. Yes. If you yield, if you surrender to, if you submit to the flesh, My God. you will yield the fruits of the flesh. Does that make sense? Yes. Whatever you yield to, whatever you submit to, you will produce the fruit My of God. that thing Jesus. that you submit to. And so it's the tug of war. It's a tug of war. My assignment this morning was to get you to a place of surrender. Young brother, I'm talking to a brother this morning. You tried. You tried a lot of things, but you can't seem to shake this addiction. I'm talking to a young woman. You tried. You fasted. You did everything that you could. You served. You prayed. But this, this, this thing still has a grip upon you. This morning, the Lord had me tell you that maybe what you need to add to your arsenal is a little bit of yielding. It's a little bit of submission to the Holy Spirit. Just rest. Just rest. You're working too hard, you see? What Christ did it was already sufficient. And so I'll tell you what someone told me a long time ago when I was struggling. He said, Melky, just rest. You're trying too hard. Just rest. What Christ did, he already did it for you. It's accomplished. Does that make sense? Isn't that good news? Yes. Rest in Christ and yield to his spirit. You will produce the fruits of the spirit. When I came to Tabernacle of Glory maybe about five years ago, my life was upside down. No self-control whatsoever. The only thing I had self-control in, and I remember telling my wife this, the only thing I had self-control in was I was able to sit in front of a desk and study for a long time. That's the only thing that I knew that I could do well. That's the only self-control that I had. So if you put a book in front of me and if you gave me something to study, I would sit there. I had the self-control to sit there to study it. But the area of purity, no self-control. The area of finances, no self-control. The area of the things that I ate, no self-control. And then thank God for our spiritual parents. Can we give it up for our spiritual parents? and for this ministry. And then I came here to Tabernacle of Glory and I started to listen to the teachings of what what dad was teaching about the Holy Spirit, having intimacy with the Holy Spirit, having communion with the Holy Spirit. And I started to yield to the Holy Spirit of God. Now, if I told you that I'm perfect, I would be lying to your face and I would be disrespecting you. I'm not there yet. But all I know, I'm not where I used to be. Hey, let me say it again. I'm not perfect. I'm getting there. But all I know is I'm not where I used to be. Come on, I give myself away. Let me end with this. I want to take this time right now. 
if there's someone right now who wants to surrender their life to Jesus, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you have an opportunity right now today. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. Today, which is the first day of November, God knew that there would be an encounter with you this morning. And so this morning, I want to give you the opportunity to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, to yield yourself to the Spirit of God. You've been fighting for a long time. You've been fighting for ever since you were born. And today, God is saying today is your day of salvation. So if that's you, you would like to give yourself to the Lord. You would like to give yourself to the Lord. Or maybe you were, you're saved, but you went away from the road and you want to come back. If you are on YouTube, go under the, the page that you're watching, under the first link. Click on the first link. And when you click on the first link, you'll be able to... Um, to fill out a form. It's going to ask you for your name. It's going to ask you for all of your information. You will fill out this form and it will come back to you. And then you will have a meeting time where we want to meet with you every Sunday afternoon at 5 so you can um, receive further instructions. And it's the same thing applies. If you don't have access to uh, to YouTube, you can call this number. You can, you can I'm sorry, you can text SAVE to this number. 786-536- 8566 786 536 8566 Hallelujah God bless you and have a great rest of the day